Uh, hi, everybody. My name is Chris Orwa from IAB Research. I'll probably just take some of my time, so let's just jump in straight to my slides. I'll use my slides as a key to the next uh, thing. So we launched a research six months ago on how to kind of we crowdsource information from Twitter. And we're more interested uh, on uh, violent events that were reported through Twitter and compare this on what they do on social media and also on the mainstream media. So we did actually go for information. We did ask for the information. We actually look for information that actually is there on the platform and what people volunteer to give in. So it's uh, whatever we call passive crowdsourcing. So like you see, our friends here at Red Cross normally have a bunch of monitors that they use kind of to track where everything is happening. In our situation, we collected about 2.5 million tweets in about 30 days, and actually using monitors and keywords never really worked for us. So we had to start thinking how to manage this big data. So we had the idea that let's use filters of keywords. Looking around on the tools that we had, open source, because we are pro open source, we couldn't find anything else. So we had the idea, like, how about we build something that actually is more of a smart filter to kind of go through this, all this information. Then we hit an idea. It's not a problem of having information overload. It's actually a filter failure. We don't have a good enough filter to actually give us what we need straight on. Like, I need information like, hey, there's something burning. Can you send Red Cross over there? Hey, there's some violence happening. Can you send Kenya police over there? So it formed part of, of our core uh, research process on how to build something that actually gives us tools. Because without that, we can't actually compare what's happening when you have a whole corpus of information, having online charter, you know, you have problem with crowdsourced uh, information is having about you know, satire and jokes and normal chatter within that. So as you can see, at the end of it, we were able kind of to show whatever Twitter had and whatever mainstream media has, and kind of the cross-section whereby what's happening with these two medias and the reach where actually Twitter cannot be reached. So we tend to do machine learning, which is kind of the holy grail of uh, analyzing data. So it's just a, a bunch of uh, you know how to train your computer to understand that actually this is a whole, this, uh, these are people, and this is kind of maybe a podium. So it's just a bunch of mathematical algorithms. You can tell it this is what kind of uh, an incident looks like, and this is not an incident. And then it goes on to look for whatever is common between these incidences, and then from there you can actually build uh, a predictive algorithm, kind of give you more information. So with this, we thought, like, how about we build a methodology whereby you sample some data using keywords, bring it, have some people, volunteers, annotate it as yes or no, whether it's neutralized or not, and then pass it to a software whereby you can actually do the classification, build a model, and then kind of do the prediction. But since it doesn't have enough data, you iterate through the whole process to actually get uh, some bit of the data. Then as you can see, we kind of just do a comparison. If you do it manually, you're able to get around 10% of the data. If you use keywords, you're able to capture about, let's say about, say 10% of the uh, news or the events, but when we use the algorithms, it kind of kicked to 85%, about 68, then it jumped to 85. Then it enables us now even break down the data into like uh, hashtags, usernames, names of places, how did you collect the data? In fact, uh, around 80% of the incidences we collected, they were from uh, uh, the location data. So from about 2.5 million tweets, we were able to move to around, uh, give and take around 5,000, which were actually useful information. So it can show like now you have a tool that you can easily go through straight and get uh, data out of it. And then select, so what's the advantage of having this particular tool? So first of all, like, you can actually identify unique incidences like Red Cross need to get very fast to a scene. Then again, you can do comparative analysis. Was this incident reported on the mainstream media? Was it reported on any other crowdsourcing platform? And then also give this information to Red Cross or any other uh, kind of organization. Uh, and then again, do also some other studies like, you know, does Twitter break news? As you can see on the slides, we also have, like, we were able to have the locations and then on the timeline when they were reported on these different medias. And actually, if all this is uh, kind of, uh, let's say, important. So one of the things maybe I'd like you to take away from this particular talk is that we realize something very interesting about what we call the information dense environment. Even though mobile penetration is the same throughout Nairobi, but you have different locations, but if the uh, incident happens, it's never reported the same. Maybe the place like uh, uh, Skibir is the largest slums in Nairobi, you tend to have people do have mobile phones, but in case anything happens, you maybe have to rely on a third party to give you the information. In a normal situation, you don't tend to have Facebook logins, uh, check-ins on Foursquare, and maybe Instagram photographs, but compared to the central Nairobi, whereby people have normal chatter uh, about whatever they're doing in the city, it's much, far much different than when you get information. It's easy to get eyewitness accounts on this particular situation. Uh, so that one marks the end of my, of my presentation. Um, we are happy to generate more information to the humanitarian agency, and you're welcome to read our reports and join us in making a good tool.